Eye on NPI. Eye on NPI brought to you by DigiKey. Thanks, DigiKey. It is ST this week, Lady Ada. What is the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, this week's new product, NPI introduction, is the LSM 6DSV 32X, which I'm just going to call the LSM 6DS. Because uh, I can, that's like the family of chips. Um, so this is a new um, six axis IMU, triple axis accelerometer, triple axis gyroscope, up to 32G, that's the 32 at the end for accelerometer, up to 4,000 uh, degrees per second on the gyro. Um, it's got all sorts of cool extras, like it has I squared C as well as I3C. Uh, we're seeing, seeing a lot more I3C devices lately. Um, you can check out, uh, we did an INAPI about I3C where we covered a, uh, like a level shifter or something for it. But we also covered like the ups and downs of um, I triple C. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I, I cube C. Um, uh, but there's some really neat extras built into this um lsm 60s sensor which caught our eye because we've been a fan of the uh, lsm 60s series for a while uh we stocked um, a breakout for the six uh ds33 which was then um supplanted by the ds3 which is a great low cost six off sensor um we stock it in the shop it's you know really good for general purpose imu projects um there's also the lsm 6 dsox the x i think is what stands for like the machine learning core but the um dso is a you know very high quality version of the 6ds sensor series it's got extremely good uh, accelerometer and, and gyroscope uh, performance we also have the ism 330 which is even better and has um more uh, the the specifications are even more tightly uh defined and what's nice about all these is um, they pretty much have the exact same pinout they, for I squared C and SPI and the auxiliary I squared C and the power and pins and the interrupt. Yes, um, this also has a like, two QR pins, which we'll chat about. But for the most part, if you've been using the LSM 60S series in one of your projects or products, you can just like swap this one in. There's slight firmware changes, but um, the package is the same. Um, so the specs for this, the, the stuff that I always look at is the uh, angular rate, angular rate, zero rate level, basically, you know, how good is the gyroscope, how noisy is it, and uh, the accelerometer, because especially if you're using these as uh, to do fusion to get uh, orientation data out of the gyroscope is what really defines how good your um, orientation math is going to be, um, because the drift comes from the gyroscope, especially if you have no magnetometer to do um overall drift correction um plus or minus one dps is pretty good uh i think like the ism 330 has like a half dps but this is you know very good again um you could definitely use this for um an imu no no problem it's much better than gyroscopes from a few years ago we have a guide um about how to calibrate and determine the um drift and um sorry to how to calculate the offset calibrate um there's an offset register in the uh lsm series and so once you figure out what the uncalibrated gyro offsets are you can or an accelerometer offsets are you can program them in your firmware and then um then you get it automatically zeroed so you can use it uh, so that way when you do filtering on it you know it's already um normalized calibrated and then um filtered um, so check out that guide if you want, you know, it, it'll work with any of the LSM 60S series. Um, and definitely that's something you want to do if you want to do, want to use it for uh, fusion orientation data. Good quality. The, the, you basically, it's very similar to the existing LSM 60S series, but what I really like is the new embedded functions. Um, so some functions that are familiar um, are like the tilt and pedometer step counter. So tilt calculation, you know, basically you can it can tell um, when something's moved from like portrait to landscape mode. The pedometer um, is great for step counting and like everyday motion detection. Um, we've done a couple of pedometer projects with like the Clue, which used the, again the LSM 60S3 CTR, I think is the variant. Um, but the pedometer works really great. 
So the, because it's an X series, it's got this cool machine learning core. I'll say machine learning is a little bit of a, a, a not like a misnomer, but it's not a like TensorFlow Life for microcontroller style. You make a model from gaining a lot, getting a lot of information, and then um, that model is like automatically generates different classifications. In instead, what you actually do is you use their tool and you would program in the different levels and heuristics you want, and then like an if then else table, and then the decision tree is what will classify the motion. So if you want to say, um, have a classification called like at rest or running or walking or laying down or um, in a car, you know, those are the kinds of things that uh, or like free falling. Um, that's what the machine learning core would be good for. So it's, it doesn't replace something like, um, you know, um, TensorFlow Life or microcontrollers or, um, you know, Goliath or whatever, like, the, you know, smart AI IoT services. It's it's on chip, it's very low power, but it's a little simpler. Um, one thing that was kind of interesting is I've seen QVAR show up in a couple different ST sensors. So accelerometers, it's like pressure sensors have it. Um, I think they might, I don't think they actually have a separate QVAR chip, but it's kind of like, it's a little similar to capacitive sensing, but it's called um, electrostatic sensing. And what's nice about that is it, also, it can detect like electrostatic objects, which means it has better proximity sensing than just plain capacitive sensing. Um, there's two pins available. Uh, you can use it for capacitive touch sensing or like proximity, but also has like a radar mode we can detect when like a gigantic body of salty water like a human is nearby so um yeah, this can be used like if you know you're making a wearable detect when it's touching when it's being picked up there's a hand holding it or it's in an ear or it's um you know clipped next to the body the eval board for this uh chip which i picked up has these little qvar um add-on like electrodes so the first one's just plain touch the second one you can do um, you know, up or down because there's two electrodes, so you can swipe between them. And the third one is the quote unquote um, radar mode. So it detects when there's a hand, there's proximity when the hand or a body is nearby, but doesn't necessarily have to be touching it. Okay, but the most interesting thing that we saw in the data sheet, this, the new um, built in um, functionalities, is the fusion mode so normally when you do sensor fusion you have to get the accelerometer gyro data and then maybe magnetometer data you put it through a Kalman filter da 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 it's, you know magic whatever and then out pops a quaternion um but one of the things that's a little annoying is you have to constantly be getting the data from these sensors like you can FIFO them but you still have to get all that data and you have to process it on a regular basis because you can't miss any gyro movements or solar movements or you're gonna your drift is going to get worse and worse what i thought was neat is that this sensor the the v in the lsm6 dsv is um the the fusion part which you can tell it um you know to use the built-in you know offsets and filtering and then it'll give you quaternion game rotation vector output it's not going to be as good again as if you did have a magnetometer, but you don't have to do it on chip. Sorry, you don't have to do it off chip on the microcontroller. It's done on the sensor itself, which means uh, it's much lower power. And for some basic motion, if you just want to know like how something twisted or is it upside down, which way it's pointing, you don't care about having like absolute orientation vector. Um, definitely going to be cheaper and easier than doing it on your microcontroller uh, for sure and frees you up to have um the microcontroller and to go into a deep sleep mode i think the sense fusion is like you know only a couple of micro amperes there is a library um available on github from st micro electronics including a demo um for getting the you know again the quaternions out of the um the rotation vector quaternions out of the sensor just by turning on uh, the sensor fusion it's really easy it's just like it's kind of just all built in it's quite nice um so i definitely want to check this out because um, we do have sensors that have fusion, but they're not nearly as cheap, not nearly as small, not nearly as low power. Uh, so definitely this could be a good upgrade for folks, especially if you already are using an LSM 60S sensor. This is a nice update available both 16G and 32G. Both are in stock. Google Digi.
available at DigiKey. All right, that's this week's IMPI new product introduction. See you next week. Hi, on MPI.